Welcome to the video on membrane carriers. The video focuses on the transportation of molecules across the cell membrane, particularly via carriers. Before delving into the topic, it's essential to have a basic understanding of some key concepts. Right. So, here you go. Firstly, you must know that the molecules move from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration without requiring any additional energy by the process of passive transport. But if they are meant to move against their concentration gradient, that is, from an area of lower concentration to an area of higher concentration, they do so by the use of energy from any source, more commonly from adenosine triphosphate, as known as ATP. This type of transport is referred to as active transport. Now, the active transport mechanisms are divided into two categories, primary active transport and secondary active transport. Primary active transport is the one that directly uses a source of energy, such as ATP, to move molecules across a membrane against their gradient. The secondary active transport, however, does not need a direct source of energy, but instead utilizes an electrochemical gradient set up by the primary active transport of another molecule as an energy source to move molecules against the gradient. Now, cell membrane is selectively permeable membrane, meaning it only allows certain substances to pass through it. For example, ions and polar molecules larger than about 150 Daltons, cannot diffuse through the membrane. Therefore, molecules that cannot cross the membrane on their own require specific transmembrane proteins, such as membrane transport proteins. Well, these membrane transport proteins are highly specific and selective for ions and other larger molecules they transport across membranes. Well, these proteins controlling membrane permeability fall into three broad classes. These are pumps, carriers and channels. Each of these classes has distinct properties, but this video series focuses on membrane carriers. We have already discussed in detail about the pumps in our video on membrane pumps available on scadia.com. And we will be discussing the membrane channels in our upcoming video. So here, we welcome you to the fascinating world of membrane carriers. Think of them as the molecular bouncers of the cell, controlling what gets in and out. They're the gatekeepers that enable the cell to interact with its environment, making sure that it gets the nutrients it needs and gets rid of waste products. Carriers are also known as facilitators permises, transporters, or simply porters. Common substrates for carriers are ions and small soluble organic molecules. But some substrates are also lipid soluble. Some carriers transport substrates in a passive manner, down concentration gradients. Solids move from a region of higher concentration to one of lower concentration, 
But other carriers use transmembrane iron gradients created by pumps to transport across a membrane up a concentration gradient or the translocation of an ion down its concentration gradient can drive another ion or sod it up a concentration gradient. So, these are called secondary transporters. But, how do membrane carriers actually work? Well, it's not just a matter of opening and closing doors. These proteins have complex mechanisms that allow them to selectively transport specific molecules across the cell membrane while maintaining the delicate balance of the cellular environment. In this video, we'll explore the incredible world of membrane carriers, delving into their structure, function, and the fascinating ways they interact with other molecules in the cell. Get ready to discover the secrets of cellular transport and the amazing world of membrane carriers. Watch our medical videos anytime and anywhere. Download scotia.com app now.